Welcome to the training course for Surface Hub. My name is Joe and I'll be your host for this session, which will walk through all of the navigation features in Windows 10 Team on Surface Hub. Just like learning your way around a new city or how to send a text message on a new smartphone, navigation is how we interact with the devices we use every day. The more we utilize each new feature, the easier it gets to remember how to do each task. As new habits are formed, Navigation becomes second nature, and implementing new workflows into your meetings will happen naturally. The welcome screen is the first screen you'll see when you walk up to Surface Hub. On the welcome screen, there are buttons to get you started right away. Whether you want to start a meeting, launch the whiteboard, or sign into Office 365. If any meetings have been scheduled with the Surface Hub, they appear here along with the name of the person that organized the meeting, and the start time of the meeting. You can swipe left and right to see the rest of the meetings for the day. If the Surface Hub is available, you'll also see how long until the next scheduled meeting to help you plan your session. The call button is used to launch Skype or Teams and make a call. We'll see more on that in a later chapter. The whiteboard button will start the Microsoft whiteboard and Connect will launch the Connect app for wireless and wired projection. Depending on how your organization has configured Surface Hub, you may also have the ability to sign in to Office 365 with your credentials by selecting Sign In to view your meetings and files. At the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see a friendly name for Surface Hub. Ours says Surface Hub, but yours might be named after the conference room or meeting space. Each Surface Hub will have different friendly names, which is used for wireless projection via Miracast. We'll see how wireless projection works later on in this course. Any questions so far? Actually, yes. Uh, can I get to PowerPoint from this window? Great question, yeah. So let's take a look at the Start menu. Down at the bottom center of the screen is the Start button, and that opens the Start menu with tiles to all the commonly used apps. Opening the Start menu starts a new session and allows you to open any app you need. The Start menu has four different options in the menu on the left. The first option is the Home View, which displays tiles for launching the most commonly used apps on Surface Hub. Here you'll find tiles for apps like Microsoft Edge, PowerPoint, and OneDrive. Go ahead and open PowerPoint by tapping on the tile. Perfect. Thanks. Now we can explore the rest of the Start menu. Go ahead and press the Windows icon at the bottom of the screen. The All Apps option displays an alphabetical list of all the apps that are currently installed on this Surface Hub. You'll see apps like Maps and Photos are also available. The third option is My Meetings and Files, which is where we can sign in to see our meeting calendar and recent files. The fourth option is End Session, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. From the Start menu, go ahead and open the Tips app. Whoa, why did it just open up next to PowerPoint? Because we already had an app open, the next app we opened is displayed in split screen mode with a divider bar down the middle. Split screen lets us work with two apps at the same time. Go ahead and open Microsoft Word from the start menu. Oh, okay, so how many apps can we have open at the same time? I'm glad you asked. You can open many apps, but only two can be displayed on the screen at the same time. You can switch between them using Task View, which is at the bottom of the screen next to the Windows icon. So PowerPoint is still open? Yeah, when we have more than two apps open, the rest run in the background, and we can switch back and forth using Task View. To really close an app you no longer need, press the X in the corner of the app. If you press the X for PowerPoint, it's closed. The Tips app is built into every Surface Hub, and it's a great way to learn more about the features and functionality of the device. For example, let's say we want to review how to open and close apps. If we select Getting Around from the list of options on the left, and then select Switching and Closing Apps, we can review the information on Task View in the Tips app. The divider bar that splits the screen between two apps can also be moved left and right to make one of the apps bigger. This is useful if you need one app to display its information larger or have more on the screen at once. 
Dragging the divider bar all the way to one side of the screen will minimize or hide the app on that side and it can be displayed again by pressing task view. In the top right corner of every app are two buttons. The arrows are used to toggle the app into and out of full screen mode. When you first switch to full screen mode, the buttons are displayed for a few seconds and then the title bar disappears as well as the task bar at the bottom of the screen. Full screen mode is great when you just want to focus on one specific app. To get out of full screen, swipe in from the top or bottom of the screen and press one of the buttons to exit full screen. The other button in the top right corner of every app is the clip to whiteboard button. When you press the clip button for the current app, Surface Hub takes a carbon copy of the app and copies it into the whiteboard. We can use this feature to take pictures of anything we have displayed on the screen and place it on the whiteboard for inking and annotations. After pressing the clip button, the whiteboard opens and the picture is copied over. From here, you can choose whether you want to copy over the whole picture or just a portion of the picture which you can select by drawing a box around the area you want to keep. The clipped image is then placed in the whiteboard where you can continue to work. We'll see how we can use the clip feature when we dive into the whiteboard in the next chapter. In the bottom right corner of the taskbar are a few more features and a menu that you can use during your session. The options menu looks like an arrow or a caret symbol and displays the options for changing the speaker volume, do not disturb, ease of access, and restart. To change the speaker volume, open the menu and select volume and then drag the slider left or right to set the desired level. Do not disturb allows you to prevent incoming call alerts, and wireless projection during your session. Ease of access allows you to turn on features for accessibility. There are options for turning on the magnifier, narration, and high contrast display mode. The restart option performs a full restart of the Surface Hub, so only use that if you're sure you need to restart the device. Next to the taskbar is the notification center, where any system notifications are displayed. These notifications are usually information for system and device administrators. The clock shows the current time, and when you tap the clock, a calendar is displayed. This is a quick way to check dates for project and planning meetings. When you start a meeting or a call, the Skype or Teams app will open in a smaller panel with the controls for the call on the side of the screen regardless if you already have one or two apps open. At the top of the panel are two buttons. You can hide the panel by pressing the Minimize button. When you minimize the app, the icon for the app will appear on the taskbar, so you can open it if you need to go back to it. If you're in a meeting, you can minimize the app without leaving the meeting. The other button moves the panel to the other side of the screen, so you can manage the settings from your preferred side. We've already seen many ways to use Surface Hub during the session. We can use apps to multitask and collaborate with our team both locally and remotely. Now that we're comfortable navigating through apps and features of Surface Hub, we need to prepare the device for the next meeting. Surface Hub does this for us. At the end of every meeting, we want to go back to the welcome screen so the next meeting can start and have the same fresh experience. Surface Hub is designed for group use so no files or information are saved to the device at the end of your session. If you've created or made changes to files that you want to keep, you must save them somewhere besides the Surface Hub. The easiest way to do that is to save files you want to keep to OneDrive by signing in to Office 365. To close out of any open apps, automatically sign out of Office 365 and prepare Surface Hub for the next group, Press End Session at the bottom of the screen. End Session displays a 10 second countdown on the screen. So if you press End Session by accident or you need to go back and save your work, press Cancel or touch anywhere else on the screen. 
Once that 10 second countdown finishes, Surface Hub will go through its cleanup process and return to the welcome screen for the next group. Anything you did during your meeting is gone from the device. What if we turned on Do Not Disturb? Changes you make in the options, such as changing the volume or enabling Do Not Disturb, reset to their default value at the end of your session. So the next group always has the same experience. When Surface Hub displays the welcome screen, the next session is ready to begin. It's important to remember to end your session because the next group may not know what to do with the files and content you used during your meeting. End session is primarily a security feature that keeps your information secure and prevents unauthorized access to your files and content. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in chapter four, whiteboarding and collaboration.